In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of both numbers and monomials. To find the greatest common factor, first it would be good to know what the greatest common factor is. Well, that is the largest factor that two numbers or two monomials have in common. One way to find that is to simply list out the factors. So for this first one, what we're going to do is I'm just going to list out the factors of 15 and 40 and we're going to look through to see what's the largest one. So factors of 15, let's see, that would be 1, uh, 3 times 5 would be 15, and 15. Okay, so there's my factors of 15. Factors of 40, let's see, 1 and 40, 2 and 20, uh, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, and I think that's it. So let's get the rest of those there. Make sure I get all my pairs. Okay, so then what I can do is look through my list, and since it's the greatest common factor, we look for the largest number that both of our lists have. In this case, the 5 is the largest number that I see. So for this one, the GCF is 5. Oops. Make a decent 5 there. There we go. Okay. The GCF is 5. Now, another strategy that we can use when finding the greatest common factor is to look at the smaller of the two numbers and see if that one goes into the larger one. And if it does, then that's my greatest common factor. So for these two, 38 and 32, I look at the 8. Does 8 go into 32? Yeah, it does. So there's our greatest common factor. And the reason that is the greatest common factor is because 8 is as big as we can go in terms of being in common. If we were to list them out, the 8 would be the largest one. 8 would also show up in the 32 list. So my GCF of 8 and 32 is simply 8. Again, that strategy is to look at the smaller one, see if it goes into the larger one. Another way that we can find greatest common factors is using the prime factorization. So for this one, we've got 15 and 28. If I want to get the prime factorizations, I can use a factor tree, or I can just break them up. I'm just going to go ahead and break them up. 15 is equal to 3 times 5. Both of those are prime, so I'll stop there. 28 is equal to 4 times 7. Well, 4 would break up into 2 times 2 times 7. Let's just double check that I've got that right. Remember, I should be able to multiply this back and get 28. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 7 is 28, 3 times 5 is 15. Okay. As I look through these prime factorizations for these two numbers, I notice that there's nothing in common. So what that means is that my GCF, my greatest common factor, is just 1. Or we could say that there's none. There's nothing larger than 1. So oftentimes when we're looking for the GCF, it, this one's not going to be that handy because there's, there's nothing we could factor out of there. Usually that's why we're looking for the greatest common factors. Okay, now let's switch over to monomials. Similar story, except now we've got some variables in there. And the variables are going to hold that same idea. What do we have in common? I'm going to start with this first one. And I'm just going to look at the number parts first. And if you notice, I've got 10 and I've got 5. So look at the smaller of the numbers. Does it go into the larger one? Sure enough, it does. So I know that my GCF is going to have a 5 in it. Then I'm going to look at my variable parts. And let me just spread them out over here. The 10 times g times h squared is like that. And then we've got that h right there. Well, what do they both have? Well, they both have 1 h in common. So my greatest common factor is going to be 5 h. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Again, using that simple strategy of looking at the smaller one to see if it'll go into the larger. In this case, 
12 does not go evenly into 30. So that's not going to work. Let's drop down 1. Let's see. Factors of 12. Hmm. 12 divided by 2 would be 6. Does 6 go into 30? Sure enough, it does. So I'm going to have 6 for sure. Then I look at my variables. Here we've got p squared. Here we've got q to the fifth. Hmm, what do they both have? Well, they both don't have anything in common. We've got p's there, q's there. Nothing in common, so my GCF in this case is just going to be 6. All right, then this last one right here. I'm going to go ahead and break it all up so we can see what's going on. So 15 would break up into 3 times 5, and then I've got x to the 4th, so x times x times x times x. Remember, that's what x to the 4th really means. And then 35, well, that would break up into seven, 5 times 7 times x times x, because we've got x squared there. Then I'm going to look through. What do they have in common? Well, we've got 5's in common right here. And I've also got two sets of x's. So I can pull that together. Now here's one thing where people sometimes get confused. We only want to multiply what we've got in one of those, what, what's in common. So it's going to be this and this that we're going to multiply. Sometimes people want to multiply all this stuff together. We just want to multiply one set from that. So it would be 5 x squared. Again, we could have just looked at this. Well, 15 doesn't go into 35. Factors of 15, let's go down 5. Does 5 go into 35? Sure enough. Then, looking at the variable parts, we've got x to the fourth and x squared. The most x's they have in common, they both have two x's, so we can take two out of both to get that 5x squared. Hopefully, uh, one of these methods for finding the GCF of both numbers and monomials is helpful to you. Remember, we've got options such as listing them out, looking for the largest one. We've also got the strategy of looking at the smaller of the two numbers, seeing if that will go into the larger one. And finally, we have the strategy of using prime factorizations to break up that number or monomial as much as we can and then seeing what they have in common and pulling those pieces back together. Hope this video was helpful. I know you're going to do fabulous at your math if you keep working hard at it.